This is Henry O. Godwin. You are listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one more time to the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. And today we have an excellent guest, the hog farmer, Henry O. Godwin. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How you boys doing? I'm great, man. I can't complain. You know? Yeah. I can't either. Nobody will listen to us anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Years ago, fuck, how many years ago was that the even seen your ass. Shit, that was 20, 30 years ago. Well, I broke my neck in 98. Do you remember that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and we were we were gone in 97. Yeah, man. Yeah, How yeah I left in 99. I broke my neck in 98. And then, uh, shit, I never, I had my surgery and then I didn't go back until yeah. 06. Damn. Yeah. It's great to hear from you, man. And uh, I was doing some research, uh, like, on Henry Godwin because, man, obviously, uh, me and Road Dog were good friends. I was also good friends with uh, Tex. I, it, it, like, me and you, like, when we were up there, uh, I didn't really know you, so I had to research a little bit. Um, yeah. George we hung South, out a few times. George yeah. South, right? George South and Italian Stallion. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I was I, – I looked that up, and I was like, damn, man, because, like, I think George – man, George was a uh, just incredible worker. So what was yeah. it like being trained with George? Well, uh, we did a thing on George, a documentary, uh, maybe a year and a half ago or something, but – they were asking me the same question. I was saying, well, you know, uh, Italian stallion, he, he taught me the physicality of it. I mean, he laid it in there and then that's, that's just how, you know, I was taught, but George, right. he was on uh, the lighter side. He taught me the psychology behind it. So I had, uh, with them two, I had the best of both worlds. He was incredible. I watched him, uh, I was on the show after you, you remember uh, uh, when Dutch's uh, daughter died, they did a, they did a, a yeah. show or whatever. And that was the first time, like when I was a little kid, I used to watch George South. Yes. You know, TBS, yeah. but I was actually on that show uh, for Dutch and George, I mean, peeling his shirt off, peeling his shirt off, peeling his jacket off. He got the biggest response the whole night. It was crazy. <laughs> That's George. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> a quick story on George. I talked to him I don't, maybe four or five months ago, and I told him, you know, George, I need to have one more match, my retirement match, and I want it to be with you. So he, oh, like, okay. almost started crying. So we're gonna, we're, we might try to do something here in West Virginia or something later That's down awesome. the road. That's awesome. <laughs> Where do you live now? I'm in West Virginia, Monroe okay. County. So you're in, you're in George South territory. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably two hours and forty five minutes from George. Okay, all right, all right. Well, yeah, that's awesome. how I got We used to run the schools all through West Virginia. The Say No to Drugs show was our that was our our thing. You know, that was our theme, and we sold it. They sold it to the schools and. Hell, we were doing two shows a day. How did you hook up with George and said, I want to be a wrestler? I was working at Princeton Community Hospital, and I was training up in, uh, just going to the gym up in Princeton, West Virginia. And I met them, and they said, hey, come to Union High School in Union, West Virginia. So I went that weekend, and shoot, the rest was history. I've been, I was with them for a little over two years, and then... They were taking me to WCW, and I was be- doing the extra stuff, and then Dusty and Cowboy Bill Watts 
hired me to go on the road with Eric when Eric started, and that's how I got my job. You know, he called Dennis up and put us together, put me out of the hood. I guess you know that story. He said, Dusty said Tex was ugly enough, but I I had a baby face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. You know, you know how I met Tex, man. It was so funny, man. You know, he's a uh, he's a five star chef now. Yeah, he sends me pictures of his sushi all the time. It's it's pretty amazing. Is that not hilarious? I mean, it is to me. I don't know, just because of the uh, the Tex that I knew. <laughs> And now he's a chef. <laughs> that is so funny to me. Oh my God, you you guys, man, you guys had a great run. Describe it. I mean, did you want to be a wrestler? Oh yeah, and then I mean, uh, the first night they put me and Tex together. We were in Atlanta at Marriott, the dungeon where all the boys used to stay. And uh, somehow a female ended up in the same bed with me and Tex that night. So Tex always said, I knew we were going to have a great relationship. <laughs> 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 hey, me and Tex have never had one crossword in all these years between us. I mean, we've been there for each other, too. So it's rare for oh. partners to do that. The nasty boys used to tease us, but they hated each other. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've seen anything going on with me and uh, me and Jamie lately. Anyway, yeah. Hey, folks, to get your official live and in color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to prowrestlingtees dot com forward slash live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. I think me and you got in the biz about the same uh age well not age but at the same time and uh it's just when we get in the business at that time in the world it was different then wasn't it oh my god it was it was i thought it was the best time i these guys now I, i've talked to some like taker and them and you know some of the guys say yeah these boys couldn't do <laughs> hang with us back in the day i mean they, i don't i don't think they could it was brutal back in the day wasn't it Absolutely, they could not do what we did. I went in the ring many a time, hurt, just broken down. I shouldn't even be in the ring. And yeah, I'm sure you did too. Well, you know, when I broke my neck on um, in Binghamton, New York, on Raw that night against Hawk and Animal, you know, I they took me to that little hospital in Binghamton, and they did an MRI, and I had a cracked C7, and he said, "Go home, take 15 weeks off, and just lay around ice and take it easy." Shit, six weeks, I was back on the road. Vince what? had a massage therapist with me, and I wrestled seven weeks with a broken neck. Wow. How did that happen, Henry? Did you take the the finish or what? Yeah, it was the doomsday device. You know, I, I didn't stooge anybody out that night. It's just not in my DNA, but, you know, I, I told the office I was a little concerned about doing it because yeah. Hawk was a little under the weather that night, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and I, yeah. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. And Tex even said, "Hey, I've taken it before. I'll do it." And then they said, "No, the office wants Henry to take it." So I took it, and sure enough, broke my neck. So, all right, because I've taken it. I've taken it like multiple times. I've taken that fucking move hundreds of times. What went wrong? Well, you know, I, I was six seven, and Animal was maybe six foot. Right, six one, and Hawk, you know, was a little tipsy that night, and he didn't hit me good off the top rope, and it just was bad all the way around, and just mm. didn't get turned, flipped over, where I could land on my chest and my stomach, and it come straight down on my head. Mm. You know, uh, WrestleMania thirteen, they did a double Doomsday device where I was on Omed's shoulders. Jamie was on animals. Then Hawk comes with a double, and man, like Ahmed didn't know how to throw me either. I guess he 
not throw me like he should have. I landed on my shoulder and everything. Yeah, it's uh, it's dangerous, especially with taller people, you know, and bigger people. I was three and a quarter, six, seven. And, yeah. You know, it's just, it's a little dangerous. <laughs> but I, bet, I do I do remember that night because we were in Rust we were in the thirteen two and I remember y'all's match. Yeah. It was a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was totally dangerous. But whatever, man. I'll take it. Nineteen ninety four you came into WWF. You worked as Henry O'Godwin, the Arkansas pig farmer. So you're a West Virginia man. Why did they pick Arkansas? You know, because of the Arkansas Razorback. They wanted okay. that. Okay. Yeah. And that was, you know, that, that was all events. You know, that was. Right. When I, when, yeah, when I went up there, I, fl- I flew, you know, flew in there after WCW let me in Texco. Yeah. You know, in four weeks, I had an uh, interview up there. So I flew up and went in Vince's little cafe office, me, him, and J.J. Dillon, and we just talked, you know, for like an hour just breaking the ice. And then he started asking me questions like what I have done. And, and I told him, you know, I worked on a, a psych floor at the hospital for a few years when I uh, farmed. And then he just got a grin on his face when I said that. And he said, well, what do you have on there? And I said, hogs and chickens and cows. He said, hogs. He says, what all entailed with the hogs? And I said, well, you know, you got to, ring them, you got to castrate them, you got to slop them. And then when I said that, he just, like the light bulb went off. So <laughs> I got a lot of that leg. That's awesome. That is so, so, awesome. so what was the WWF slop made of? Oh, I thought you were going to say what was in the slop that Sonny got slopped with that <laughs> That That one too, sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, we'll just start with that then. That'll clear everything up. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, you know, at, at the big shows and the pay-per-views of TV, Wolfie, that we always had all that good food. Yeah. So I'd always get, like, the lettuce. I'd throw some ranch in there and some bread, maybe a little spaghetti sauce and some spaghetti, a little milk, you know, to get the sloppiness. That night, you know, Vince, we had the little meeting. He said, yes, yeah, uh, Bruce Pritchard said, yes, yeah, we want you to slop Sonny tonight. I said, oh, hell yeah, that'd be cool. So I went and made the slop. It was about half full. Oh. So I went in the locker room, and I said, now listen, Sonny's getting slopped tonight. Nobody fuck with the slop. <laughs> so I, le- I left. I sat down, and I left. I told him not to mess with it. So when I come back, it was about an inch from the top. Oh. And the razor and the kid contributed quite a bit. Uh, oh, Dr. Tom Pitchford, he was dipping that money, so he was, he contributed. Mm. <laughs> it was a locker room stew in that bucket. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, me and Tex, had, we had death threats and everything. People were going to kill us and beat us up because we slopped some <laughs> I'd say so. Oh, my God. And so, you know, you did the heel turn with the LOD, which unfortunately led to your, your injury there. Talk about Dirty White Boy, old Uncle Cletus. I've seen him a hundred times wrestle in, in southwest Virginia. So talk a little bit about Tony Anthony. Tony's one of them big, silly southern boys that nobody ever says any bad things about. You just, you got to love him, and I do. Right. You know, they brought him in, and because we turned heel and they didn't want to turn him really Jim heel and he didn't want to turn heel because he was working for us in home video at the time. Yeah. So brought in uh dirty white boy, Tony Anthony, PJ Hopper. It was really going good. And I think it would have been good, but you know, we were supposed to turn on him that night. We lost the belts to LOD and I ended up breaking his nose and guy, uh, it was a horrible night, but, we, me and him in Tex, we almost started a riot, so we had to sneak out. The police was looking for us. I mean, it was crazy. And Dirty White Boy was bleeding, and uh, her Uncle Cletus at the time, bleeding real bad. You'll have to ask him about that when you talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's hilarious. Have you talked to Tex? Yeah. Yeah, not too long ago. Uh, I want to get him on there, man. I really I love that guy. I, I'll tell you a story. Uh, 
Tex and Brian uh, Road Dog were living in a, a house in Nashville, and I needed somewhere to go. Blah blah blah. Talk to Brian. Me and Brian go back a long way. Uh, also, me and Tex. Uh, but they, yeah. they see their house they were living in. It was a, a rental house or whatever. So that's how we got to be like bros. You know what I mean? Uh, they, yeah. They signed me into this place. So anyway, uh, I miss them both, man. I really do. Yeah, Tex, he told me stories about you and him and Jamie, you know, knowing each other and working yeah. together, I guess, in March, right? Yeah, we had we had fun. It was back in uh, the Memphis, Nashville days. Me and those guys got close and stuff. But, yeah, they sold me their house, basically. <laughs> it, was hard. it was hard back then, but we had a good time in that era, didn't we? We had a great time, man. The business, I'm not sure what the guys, like, deal with now or whatever, but I think it was so much cooler back then. I really do. Yeah, awesome time. One of the questions I would love to ask you about is the Southern Justice gimmick. Who came up with that? I did. Okay. Yeah, when we went to the station, Colonel Parker, Robert yeah, Fuller was the awesome. manager. Yeah, that was it. That was going to be badass, but I, you know, that's when I was wrestling with a broken neck. Right. Matter of fact, our last match together was against Road Dog and Billy Gunn, and we were supposed to win the belts for the third time that night. But Vince sent me home so I could have my neck looked at, and then I ended up having spinal fusion. Yeah, yeah. I thought that gimmick was just amazing because it was like I don't know. It reminded me of the villains from Roadhouse or something. You know what I mean? Kind of like yeah. the the tough guys that, you know, were with the main heel, you know? So Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a big deal. yeah. well one of the reasons you came on here is is we found, you know, a good old buddy of mine on Facebook and his name's Nick and he's part of Captain's Corner. And one thing we want to promote is your upcoming online signing with him on Facebook on December seventeenth at eight PM. Tell the folks about that. Oh, I can't wait. I'm I'm taking some goodies over. To, he says we could probably, you know, see if it's worth anything. Some old memorabilia and all kinds of stuff. So looking forward to it. It's going to be in Blacksburg, Virginia, on December 17th. And go Hokies, baby. <laughs> good time. Go Hokies. That's right. <laughs> now tell me, do you have the Rebel flag version of your action figure? I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That one wouldn't go over too well today, would it? <laughs> that was, uh, when we did the thing a couple, three or four months ago for Thinking Signatures, uh, yeah, he was selling them for like 60 bucks a piece. And our, our dual set was like bringing 125 and the slot buckets were bringing 60 I mean, it was crazy. We had a blast. Well, we're going to promote the heck out of it for you and him too, you know. Mark, can they tell you about anything on social media? Do you have any Twitters or Instagrams or anything like that? Uh, no, nah, I'm not. I mean, my wife helps me a lot. I don't do a lot of stuff. I'm old school. I'm a country boy. <laughs> Talk about Undertaker's retirement ceremony. How cool was that? Oh, man, I was down at my son's in uh, Pigeon Forge, and uh, I get a call from this weird number, and it's Bruce Pritchard. He yeah. says, hey, you know, I hadn't talked to him in probably a couple of years, and he said, hey, what's going on? It's Bruce. And, uh, you know, Undertaker's farewell is coming up in three weeks, and, you know, he wants you to be there. He wants to get the BSK together. And I said, uh, okay, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So we went down, and, I mean, it was awesome. You know, I got to talk to Hunter sincerely for about 30 minutes. It was a good talk, and talk with Kevin and Sean and of course I was with Godfather and Rakishi and Savio and Tech so we I mean we had a blast and we hadn't all been together in 20 years I don't know if y'all heard the story but pretty bad at the hotel when Undertaker showed up and they had to put me and Tex to bed him and Godfather that night so that's how that I love it yeah. I love it awesome time and you know me and Tex bought some nice dark clothes to represent you know, Mark. And then about three hours before we go live, one of the little suits runs up, you know, and says, Hey, Vince wants you to wear overalls. Did y'all bring overalls? Oh, and he brought nice clothes. So, uh, <laughs> they got runners going out to all the Oshby gosh 
looking for overalls for two big <laughs> rednecks. <laughs> so, so, you know, sure enough, they found them, and we wore overalls to the ring that night. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Well, I tell you what, when you're when you're doing that George South match, you come back on and you promote it as your retirement match with us, okay? Anytime. Oh um, yeah, that'd be fun. Mark, thank you so much, man, for coming on here, man. <laughs> that, I appreciate it. It's been a long time. That I'm super happy that that, that Mark came on here uh, tonight and just oh my god, this is awesome. I love it. Uh, thanks, Mark, man. I I. Appreciate you, man. You got I'm glad you guys got a hold of that in. We'll have to do it again. Y'all stay in touch. All right, yep. we will. Thank you so much. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope-ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. <laughs> Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're gonna wanna call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, bowiehomes.com. That's B-U-I-E homes.com. Or you can email him at benbowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and, and we have a special guest today. This is Nick from Facebook's Captain's Corner. They are the top dogs of the pro wrestling auction memorabilia signings, autographs, whatever you need. They are the top dogs of that. Just look them up on Facebook for Captain's Corner. I think it's facebook.com slash Captain's Corner. But anyway, welcome to the show, Nick. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for having me on, Jimmy. And yeah, you're right. Uh, someone will be able to go uh, right on Facebook, search for Captain's Corner, and they'll find uh, you know all the information about a bunch of signings I've had in the past and uh, a bunch more exciting ones coming up in the near future. Yeah, well, don't go too far because we're going to talk about all that. But let's start on the first reason. So for our show today, you just heard the amazing Henry Godwin. Mark Canterbury, however you want to say it. I couldn't get Wolfie to call him Henry for the life of me. So, <laughs> so starting off with that, the cool thing is, is you've got Henry O'Godwin in a signing coming up December 17th at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live. Talk a little bit about that one for me. Sure. So, so what I've been doing, Jimmy, since the pandemic started, and, and uh, I've, I've been specializing in virtual signings. And uh, at first, it was really one of the only ways that the fans would still be able to meet you know, some, some of their favorite wrestlers. And, and now that you know the world is opening up again, things are kind of getting back to normal, I've still kept it as, as an, an option for people that you know maybe aren't able to go to the wrestling shows or the conventions to meet their favorites. Uh, so, yeah, so on, on Friday, December 17th, I've got a Henry Godwin at 8 p.m., and I'm going to have uh, photos, cards, magazines, all kinds of really cool stuff available. They'll be able to watch Henry sign the item right in front of their eyes. They'll be able to ask Henry any questions that, you know, uh, someone may have always wanted to ask him. Another cool thing is that Henry told me that he's going to be bringing some of his ring-used gear that we're going to be auctioning right. off too. And that's another, that's another uh, market that's, uh, you know, kind of uh, exploded over the last 18 to 20 months, the ring used gear market where, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. tight boots. So, so Henry told me he's bringing, I believe uh, one of his pairs of overalls, some elbow pads and some other items. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, the, the next day, uh, all roads lead to the captain's Christmas party, which is one of my premier virtual events. And we're having the Ricky, the dragon steamboat. And I know you guys are partnering with us in that you're one of our, one of our sponsors. So uh, that's Saturday, December 18th at 4 PM, Ricky, the dragon steamboat, one of my all time favorites. That he is the best. And honestly, that is awesome. One of Wolfie's favorites. Wolfie is, he, thought his best opponent would have been uh, Ricky the Dragon with Wolfie as Slash as a heel. I thought that would be amazing just to think about it. So 
but you know, Ricky could make me look good in the wrestling ring, Nick. So that's kind of <laughs> you know, that's kind of cool. Well, so anyway, what, let me get back to Henry Gosling. So during the discussion that the folks just heard, we've learned some things. And one of the things is about Henry Godwin is Henry's actually from like an hour away from where I am from and grew up in, in southwestern Virginia. And you're actually meeting up with him very soon on that night in Blacksburg, Virginia. So when you drive into town, I'm going to need you to give him a go Hokies just for me, okay? I absolutely <laughs> will. And uh, that's actually because uh, the, the the virtual signing, of course, to anyone tuning in could be anywhere in the United States or really in someone's right. living room. But for the for the physical purposes, I will be in Blacksburg, Virginia with uh, Henry Godwin. Then Uncle Cletus, Dirty White Boy Tony Anthony, well, those are the two signings I'll be doing on the 17th. And uh, awesome. I'm a huge college sports fan, and uh, I, I got to get to Blacksburg to watch the Hokies game at some point. So I've been, I've been to Charlottesville, it. but I got I got to go to yeah. Blacksburg. Oh, Blacksburg. I mean, Charlottesville, Charlottesville is our toilet. So Blacksburg <laughs> is, the, is the spot, my, my homie. Go Yo, you're right. You're right. Till I die. So, yeah, anyway, the Hokies are not so good lately. But, you know, we've got a bowl chance up in Yankee Stadium. So that could be kind of Oh, pinstripe cool, bowl. Nice. Yeah, yeah, the pinstripe bowl. But anyway, <clears throat> enough about college sports. Let's get back to uh, Nick here. So, Nick, now, Captain's Corner, where did you come up with that name? So the name is uh, so uh, the name is a pl- is a play off of a nickname that I've always had within my group of friends. Uh, just the captain, as you know, someone that would kind of organize and kind of make the plans of everyone within the group. Yeah. Uh, and when I started doing the signings about seven or eight years ago, now I I need to think of a name for my company. And uh, Captain's Corner is what popped in my head. And actually, the the name Captain's Corner is taken directly from a a very short-lived Captain Lou Albano uh, UWF TV talk show. Uh, it yeah. only maybe was on for a handful of episodes, but so it, okay. it worked out to where my friends have always called me Captain or El Capitan, and, you know, uh, Captain's Corner yeah. was just why I decided to brand myself as uh, as a promotional company, and now uh, it's so funny that there'll, there'll be people that may not even know my first name, and they'll, they'll call me Captain, or, you know, they'll just say it. Captain, where, whereas it used to be just a name, maybe, you know, eight, nine, ten people called me. Now there's some yeah. People that may not even know my first name's Nick. They'll just call me Captain when they see me or at one of the signings. So, uh, yeah, that's the origin of the company named Captain's Corner. That's amazing. So now we know the name and the reason behind it. I know you've spoken about this a little bit earlier, but what made you start this? What made you see the hole in this and, and, and really take advantage of it? Well, I uh, just just like, you know, I feel like 90% of the people involved in the business, I, I grew up a wrestling fan. My father uh, was a huge wrestling fan. He went to a couple of big uh, Shea Stadium matches, uh, Bruno San Martino versus Larry Zbysko and Bruno San Martino versus Holy Stan cow. Hansen. Wow. So, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, he grew up in uh, in New York. And, you know, uh, when I was born, he had he had a son to watch wrestling. But so I can honestly say some of my first experiences of TV involved wrestling in the, the, the late 80s. So I, I've, been, I've been a fan as long as I can remember, you know. And yeah. at some point, uh, um, my wife, my wife, Leah, uh, she, uh, we were getting ready to have our first kid and we just thought, well, it wouldn't hurt to move some of the stuff that I had. Well, I had acquired, you know, a decent, decent little wrestling collection over, you know, 20, 20 plus years of fandom at that point. And yeah. I, we decided that I was going to move some of it at uh, a local wrestling convention. So we, mm-hmm. we did this a few times. And then after about three, maybe four times, when inventory started getting really low, uh, it was actually my wife that came up with the idea of, uh, it looks like everyone else is bringing in talent. Why don't you start bringing in talent? And that now that was, so we, we had been vending for a few years. That was about, I've been bringing, I've been working with talent for about six to seven years now, vending for about, you yeah. know, eight or nine years. But yeah, so that's, yeah. that's where it came from. And since then, I've been fortunate to work with literally hundreds of wrestlers, including Wolfie D, who is one yeah. of my favorites, one of our oh, favorites, awesome. I should say. And, yeah, totally. uh, yeah. and yeah, there's, well, I, like I said, just the fact that next, you know, I'm working with Henry Godman coming up, Ricky Steamboat, Vampiro, Savio Vega have IRS in January. Uh, this year, I've been fortunate to work with Sergeant Slaughter, the Berserker, Tatanka, you know, a lot of the guys yeah. that I grew up watching. So, uh, it's just yeah. really cool that, you know, uh, 
once the pandemic started, some things shifted in my life. But one of the positive things is that it's allowed me to live my dream and kind of do this full time. So, uh, you yeah. know, every day I try to stay as humble as possible and just, you know, remember that when I'm going to the post office five days a week and, you know, I'm spending a bunch of hours packing and invoicing that, you know, little, little Nick, little captain would have been in awe to think that, you know, he's sitting next to Sergeant Slaughter, or sitting next to Ricky Steamboat. So, uh, I know. you know, yeah. every day is a good one. Yeah, the, the little action figures that little Nick played with, you're now sitting beside <laughs> the real, that's a trip, man. You ain't. So I consider you a part of my official clique called the We All Eat crew, uh, basically where we believe that if one person is doing good and can help another person, that's the – that's the turn of this. And that's kind of why I believe in turn this into this conversation with you. Cause I wanted to highlight you, especially since this uh, show is officially co-sponsored by captain's corner. So being an official member of the, we all eat crew, who are some of the cool people that you've had in the past? Like that blew your mind. Now, of course, the stars like Sergeant Slaughter, and of course, you know, you said Wolfie D, but who are some of the people that are just like, holy cow, this dude is so cool. So I can honestly say, and, and it's not just because I just had him this past weekend, but John Nord, the berserker, I, I know you, you popped in uh, the virtual signing over, over the weekend, uh, Jimmy, but yeah. he was just one of those guys. I had him on for a few hours over the summer, but uh, this past weekend, uh, we did a loop. So we did a few public signings and a virtual signing. And and I yeah. can honestly say it, it, it wasn't a dull moment. And it was all just laughs and stories. And what a good guy. Just a good-hearted guy. Uh, it was great to all the fans, whether it was uh, fans that came out to, to see him in public, fans that were requesting autographs, uh, you know, uh, through a virtual feed. And it's just one of those guys that, you know, um, people he, – he may, he's may not be starting to slaughter in terms of, uh, you know, superstars, but he had a great career and he had – so many memorable moments, and you know he he had one of those little figures too that little Nick and little Jimmy were playing with all those years ago. So exactly, uh, exactly. That, he he he's right up there. Uh, I, I've uh, someone else that I've worked with a bunch of times. That's just a great guy. Uh, little Guido from the Full Blood Italian GCW. Oh and, man, that's awesome. Yeah, Guido is. Uh, I've had him on my platform a few times, and I've worked with him probably a half a dozen times for signings. And he's someone else that, besides being one of the quickest beer drinkers I've seen, he's someone that you know every time I see him, I always give him a big hug or you know a big handshake or high five. He's he's just a great guy. Cowboy Bob Orton is someone else that I've worked with probably a half a dozen times now, and you know he he was involved in WrestleMania one, the main event. I mean, it's, I know, and, and I know. I'll be going up and down the road with him. And he's just someone else. It's just a wealth of knowledge because, you know, when I'm, when I'm in the car with these guys or, you know, uh, we're, we're just having a meal. Like I'm almost picking their brain just to try to get any kind of nugget of, of knowledge I can pick up from them. Cause these guys are, are literal pieces of history, you know? And hundred uh, percent. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so just like he hearing Roddy Piper stories from Bob Orton here and Bruiser Brody stories from, from the berserker. It's just, uh, you know, what, that's one of the perks of the job, but that's, that's one of the things that, you know, I'll always, you know, uh, think, think fondly of. That's awesome, man. And the cool people speaking of berserker, dude, I, first of all, the story <laughs> about him being able to whip Haku's ass or <laughs> did whip that one. I mean, <clears throat> look, Hey, I'm not going to doubt the man, and I would never say it to his face, but I would love to see that. That's all I'm saying. I don't doubt it. I just would love to see it. <laughs> or maybe I wouldn't. It sounds ferocious, actually. Well, yeah, it's it's something you kind of want to look at from afar, right? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. It's like, can I get my binoculars and see this fight? But, man, what a battle. That that would be like King Kong versus Godzilla to me, you know? But anyway. Oh, and then the other story that I put through there to you guys, I wanted to hear a Fuji rib and hearing about General Adnan's yeah. dog. That is nuts, man. But that I never even that was that was one I never even heard before. So I was like, whoa! Yeah. I, I was expecting a different story because he told me a few Fuji stories, but he went with that one where it's like, whoa, that's pretty stiff. <laughs> it's very stiff, and I'm telling you, I've heard some funny ribs, man. Like the, the jeans all tied up with locks, and and you know things Wolfie's told me about backstage in Memphis. I mean, those guys were brutal too. But wow. That one was the stiffest, I think. So here's another, you know, just a, a funny story from someone that comes to mind. Is there a funny story that you can think of somebody, anybody told you? 
I, I do have a funny story. I've worked with Ken Patera a bunch of times. And uh, mm-hmm. Ken Patera, I, I love him. They broke the mold with Ken Patera. And okay. what, what I mean by that is that he's, he, Ken's in his 70s now, uh, but he is the exact same person he was when he was in his 20s. And okay. uh, he, he uh, does and says what he wants. So we're in Albany, New York, uh, about a year ago. And him and Tony Gurria spent a lot of time together. Hadn't seen him in probably close to 30 years. So we're, co- we're coming down from our, from our hotel room. We're in different rooms. We're on the same floor. And to- Tony is uh, meeting us in the lobby. And this is Sunday morning. You know, some people might be in church. Some people might still be sleeping. It's early Sunday morning. Uh, and we come out to the lobby and we see a bunch of people in the lobby, including Tony Gurria. So I just give Tony a nod and a wave. He waves back to me. Ken Patera at the top of his lungs goes, Hey, Ganaria, it's Tony Ganaria, guys. And literally there's probably like three or four different families, you know, maybe eating at the breakfast buffet or looking, looking to check out. And Ken Patera is screaming Ganaria at the top of his lungs at about 8.45, 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning. And I remember it was one of those things where it, it, it's not, it's not the, the, the craziest story, but it's one of those funny stories where it's like a, only could it happen uh, exactly how it happened. So uh, right. I, I consider Ken Patera a national treasure, but uh, <laughs> he's, the, yeah. he's, he's, he's the character. But there's, there's a funny little story. That was the first one that popped in my head. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so I know from our conversations, you're friends with the Hannibal TV. I watch his shows all the time. So I saw on one of his episodes that I would consider possibly – his worst guest was Bill Irwin. Wow, Bill Irwin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I would never expect you to put this out here, and I can cut this out if you like. Was there one of those for you, Nick? Have you had one yet? Oof. Well, I'll tell you this. And before I answer your question, I was actually the person that put together that interview. And, oh. uh, and while Bill was – I do work with Hannibal TV. Uh, to, some, to some people in the know, I know uh, – uh, a lot of people, a lot of Hannibal's fans uh, can't stand me. Uh, I, I do a little, uh, I won't even say heel character, but, you know, I sometimes interrupt his, his interviews. But um, I, I do work okay. with Hannibal, and I, I set yeah. up on average probably about probably one or two interviews a month for him. And I set up one for Wild Bill Irwin. And uh, because there's so much travel involved in, in my part of the job, I wasn't able to set up the interview with Hannibal and Wild Bill until probably close to 11.30, 11.45 at night because I, I yeah. had him – for a public signing and then a virtual signing. And the, my, one of my premier shows on my, my Facebook feed is called the Captain's Corner Happy Hour. So what do you do at happy hour, Jimmy? You, 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 th- you throw a few back, yes. And normally right, right. the guys, some guys drink beers, some guys drink this, that. So Bill requested vodka specifically. And I, I, I love vodka. I'm a vodka guy. But sure. 99 out of 100 times, I'm going to cut it with something. Well, Bill decided not to cut it with anything that night. And he started at some point just taking pulls of the handle. Well, we did mm. our signing, and we actually went significantly longer. Like, I, I tried to set aside anywhere from two to maybe two and a half hours. Bill and I were on for almost three hours because he had so many people looking for goon photos, wild bill photos, so on and so forth, right? So we got to Hannibal right. a little later than expected. And Bill partake, partook in uh, quite a bit of the vodka. So anyway, yeah. he wound up uh, getting to Hannibal after maybe a, a full night of partying and and the result is what you saw that you just brought up of their show. Now, in terms, in terms of guests that I've had that maybe have not gone as smooth as I hope, um, I, I kind of I look at myself as uh, uh, I can kind of t- put the personality up if I need to and kind of turn it down when, when someone else, like if I'm with an Austin Idol or a Mountie, you know, I can kind of chill in the background. But if I'm with someone that maybe I need to turn my personality up a few notches, I can do that too. So, yeah. and I, I, I've never had a situation like that where someone was, was completely, uh, you know, I, I completely uh, unable to properly answer questions. But I have had some situations where maybe someone's not, someone like a Danny Spivey. I love Danny. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, David San Martino, they, they aren't the most talkative guests. So in between signing items when, you know, someone asks a question, you might only get a one or two word answer, which, you know, doesn't really always properly go into details on, on 
the answer that everyone was looking for. So I would say sure. those are two examples of guys that are, you know, a little more short winded, but I haven't had anything like, uh, with the virtual feed with the wild bill and uh hannibal incident you know fingers crossed of course that was wild man and i was watching that and when he shut it down i was like okay there you go hey we've got the power sometimes yeah Yeah. Yeah, it was good for sure okay so that being said worst guest not necessarily worst guest because you would probably never say that but dream guest now let's just say living or dead i'll give you two or three just give me some dream guests that you would have loved or or would love to have on your show, obviously. Well, uh, and I'm being completely honest. Uh, if you asked me three guests, Ricky Steamboat would have been one of them. He was one That's of awesome. my, my favorite wrestlers as a kid. My three favorite wrestlers as a kid were Kerry Von Erich, Hulk Hogan, and Ricky Steamboat. And Ricky Steamboat, uh, you know, I have the pleasure that I'll be working with him very soon. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. If if we're taking Ricky out of the equation, because, you know, I will be working with him soon, Hulk Hogan would, of course, be a dream guest. And then I would probably also say, you know, what? I'm, I'm going to say, uh, of, can this be someone that passed away or someone that's still of the living? Uh, both. You can, anyone. You can say all. Okay. So, so now, since, since, since Ricky's going to be scratched off in the next few days, we're going to say Hogan for someone that's still with us. And for someone that's passed away, I'm going to say Dusty Rhodes. Oh, yeah. That's all. Yeah, he I, he would have yeah. been. I feel like I told you a couple of guys that were giving me a shitter answers. I feel like Dusty would have no problem with answering anything and with as much detail as necessary. No, and Hogan would be the exact same way from what I've seen it then. You know, yeah. people like to hate on Hogan, man, but they don't remember hulking up used to get them fired. I mean, I still love Hogan. I, I can't help it. You know, he's. He's I'm that same right? way. I I will I yeah. will always be that five year old that five year old that cried at WrestleMania six because Ultimate Warrior beat Hulk oh. Hogan. I, I cried at three when he beat Andre. I was like, this is it. He beat the the evil giant. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. So you know, this has been awesome to talk to you. So so, what are your special plans for 2022? Who do you have coming up that you can tell us about? So I actually about- so you guys will get the, you guys will get some hot news because some of this hasn't even been. Uh, announced on the captain's corner page. Uh, uh, so on December 18th, I'm finishing the year with one of my all time favorite wrestlers, Ricky steamboat. I'm taking off some time. And then on Friday, January 14th, I'm actually coming back with, uh, another one of my favorite wrestlers as a kid, Mike Rotunda, uh, who nice. a lot of people know as IRS or when our shyster. So yeah. on January 14th, Mike Rotunda is going to be on a, on a virtual signing, the cap happy hour. And then, uh, I've also got slick, scheduled for january uh, uh bill demott aka U morris he's coming up and february i've awesome. got uh shane douglas and then uh for for our younger fans uh, i've got uh carrion cross and scarlet bordeaux in march so i got you know nice. kind of cross cross pollinating here with talents of you know it. uh the past present and future that sounds so cool man uh, you're doing big things i all do respect to you man i hope your hustle comes through the wires here and, and gives me just a little more, man. I, I love it. I, I can't deny your hustle. So that's awesome. We're all, so we're special, all this together. We are, exactly. So, you know, your special plans for 2022. But in 2021, I got to meet you because of, of course, our friend Wolfie D, the, the star of this show. Now, when I first spoke with you, we were talking about our shows and kind of comparing the situation. And I brought something up sure. to you and I said, hey, man. Tell me what you don't like about the Wolfie D podcast. And the first thing that came up, you were very responsive. You were like, hey, Jimmy, I like this. I like this. But honestly, you lost me with the current stuff. And all due respect, (laughs) now you're going to have to deal with the current stuff. So, DJ, hit the music. It's a current affair. It's a current affair. All right, we're back with Current Affairs and our good friend Captain's Corner's Nick, and he is going to have to sit through a couple of Current Affairs questions. And you know, if I don't take it easy on Wolfie, I can't take it easy on our guests. So, Nick, I hope you're I hope you're doing all right, man. Do this right like a band aid, Jimmy. We'll do this right off. 
Yes, ripping it off, ripping the current off. Okay. Now, all right. Taker recently on the Kevin Hart show gave his Mount Rushmore. But have you seen this? It's like an Old Spice sponsored. You know, I I love I love that show. I do. Yeah. I've actually watched previous episodes of Ronda Rousey and some other ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. So when, when I saw Rick Undertaker Blair. was yeah. on there, I, I had to watch it. So he gave his Mount Rushmore as Andre, Stone Cold, Rock, and HBK. Okay. Now, you've clearly said, you know, Hulk Hogan, Kerry Von Erich, Ricky Steamboat. But if you had to pick your current Mount Rushmore. Who would you say that you'd like and you would place on that Mount Rushmore? Oh, and, and this is wrestlers that are just currently active, correct? Right, exactly. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be uh, neutral here, so I'm going to go two AEW and two WWE guys. So okay. uh, for the AEW, um, Daniel Bryan, uh, Brian Danielson, I've got to throw him on there just for being one right. of the best technical wrestlers in the world. And, you know, um, it's so amazing. As a teenager, I, I was a huge ROH fan. I would go to all the ROH shows, try, try to hang around backstage and all that. And uh, he was one of the best wrestlers in the world in 2002, 2003, 2004. And now, yeah. 20 years later, he's still one of the best wrestlers in the world. So it's amazing. Um, I'm also going to throw someone else that was around there at the time, and that would be CM Punk. You know, when oh, yeah. um, when yeah. Punk came back in August, it felt like the biggest thing to happen in wrestling in years. That that one, it, it, all the whole wrestling community was talking about it. Now, I, I don't think that's necessarily going to decide the war, any one person. You know, if it's even a war, I mean, it's it's different from the WWF. WCW days and the Monday Night Wars, but um, that was something that gave AEW a lot of momentum and had a lot of people talking about you know CM Punk again. So I'm going to say Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, and CM Punk as half the Mount Rushmore. Then I'm going to go over to Roman Reigns. I I don't watch weekly anymore, but I a lot of cool stuff and a lot of cool interviews I've seen with Roman over the last year. He seems to be absolutely killing it from what I've seen. And then absolutely. and then I gotta throw up. I got to throw Brock Lesnar in there just uh, for being, uh, he's not as active as the other three uh, heads on the Mount Rushmore, but uh, Brock it has that big time match feel. No matter what he does, everything he does, it, it feels a little bit bigger because like when we were kids, Hogan wouldn't wrestle every week. You know, Hogan might right. wrestle once a month on TV, if that, right. you know, so right. you have to go see him live. And I, I feel like Brock, you know, if Brock shows up, it's something big's going to happen. So uh, right. that'd be my uh, Mount Rushmore. Of, of current yeah. active wrestlers. I love that. That's perfect. And you know, that, that could be, I almost think that they could do that a little more with Roman too, you know, because he does seem to work every SmackDown. And I think if they would personally dial him back a little bit, it may make him even more, but he's firing on all cylinders. So I can't hate on the guy that he seems to have really taken the company on his shoulders too. So I love it. That was a great answer. So thank you for that one. Now, my second one, this one is kind of a, it's not the best question, but lately they did the Survivor Series 2021, and it was dedicated to The Rock. But basically, the only connection to The Rock was the Red Notice deal that was said to be in the millions. What did you think about that? They basically said this show is The Rock's 25th anniversary, but there was no Rock. Well, yeah, that seemed, that seemed a little bizarre to me. And I remember seeing some memes after the fact that Rock did more... Uh, during, I believe, Ken Shamrock's Hall of Fame induction with uh, uh, Impact last year than he did during his own 25-year uh, anniversary of Survivor Series. Yeah, that seemed bizarre. I, I had heard scuttlebutt that I guess there, he was supposed to be more involved in, uh, at least on paper, and then you know, over the last couple of weeks or even a couple of months that whatever he was going to do, you know, I don't know if his commitments, I mean, he's, he's, he's the busiest man in America. I don't know if he wasn't right. able to maybe be as involved as they hoped. And they kind of, at that point, were already, you know, billing it a certain way. And it kind of was what it was, but yeah, it didn't seem it, 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 they didn't do a good job of making it feel like it was any kind of event of importance. Right. I agree. Yeah, it was great. Okay. So speaking of the rock, his show, Young Rock, which is one of the actual network shows that I watch, Young Rock Season 2 is coming up, and it's going to cover Rock's run in the USWA and its first year in the WWF. So they are currently searching for actors to portray Lawler, Dundee, Tommy Rich, Young Bam Bam Bigelow, 
Triple H, Undertaker, Downtown Bruno, and Brooklyn Brawler. So, being as that said, you know, it, the time frame is pretty much correct. If you had your choice to book actors in the role of PG-13, who would you pick? How could you, you know, cast Wolfie D and Jamie Gundy? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Well, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the easy road. I'm going to say Wolfie can still play Wolfie because he would right. just need to grow his hair back. He needs to grow his hair back, right. and he might need to lose some muscle. He might need to lose a little size right. if we're doing a mid-'90s Wolfie. But I'm going to say Wolfie is Wolfie. And let's see, yeah. Jamie's not always best at making bookings, so I don't think they'd want to go that route. Um, <laughs> who, who can we have as Jamie? Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to think. Who, who, would you, who would you have as Jamie, Jimmy? Hey, man, that's a tough one. You know, as Jamie, I'm almost thinking, you know, it, 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 oh, man, he's a little old, but he plays. Oh, he's he's not going to be perfect for this, but I just think of the mustache and John Leguizamo. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm putting John Leguizamo in in Jamie. I can I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that with the mustache, John Leguizamo. Yeah. Yes. That's good. I'll of co-sign course. that. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> We'll have Wolfie as Wolfie, and then John Leguizamo as 1995 uh, J.C. Ice. I love it. All right. Well, hey, Nick, you know, thank you again for being a part of Current Affairs. Tell them about one more time what you've got coming up with our good buddy, Henry Goddard. So uh, Henry's a big part of the Captain's Christmas Weekend, which is going to be December 16th, December 18th, and that's going to be streaming exclusively on Facebook. Uh, you can go right to your Facebook search bar. And uh, look for Captain's Corner on the. We have a double header of signings on December 16th. So it's going to be Vampiro, former WCW star, and uh, someone that Wolfie knew, Savio Vega. So, and I know you guys have had him on the show as well. Yeah. So that would be December December 16th. Uh, December 17th, Henry Godwin and uh, Uncle Cletus, a.k.a. Dirty White Boy Tony Anthony. And then the final signing of the year is the 18th, and that's with one of my all-time favorite and one, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, Hall of Famer Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and that's uh, December 18th at 4 p.m. So uh, that uh, it's going to be a busy weekend for me. I'm going to be hitting uh, Jersey, PA, Blacksburg, Virginia, Hickory, North Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> go Hokies. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but thank you again, Captain, for being on the show. Nick, it's, it's been a true pleasure. Come back and see us anytime. You need to promote something for the show. We love having you. Is there anything else I think you like to end things with? Well, I want to say, you know, uh, we've been working together the, the last little bit now, Jimmy, and uh, we're going to continue this relationship through 2022. And I know I'm looking yeah. forward to getting some other great guests on for you guys. And I know, you know, I uh, love to be a part of everything you guys have going on. But uh, I usually end my shows with uh, cheers to the working man. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. You too, Jimmy. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling. The podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise. This team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right. It's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah! Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com.
So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. Uh, I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Live Wolfie D. And then on YouTube, at Live and in Color with Wolfie D Podcast. Our website is anchor.fm slash Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie. Wolfie D. Also, do you have a product or business you'd like Wolfie D to talk about? Let us know about it by leaving a recorded message over at anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. Leave your name and contact info and we'll get back to you. Once again, that's anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate, first of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon, and our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you, don't. got a cat. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving it, call up, bum rush your mother, utilize a hubcap, I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times, tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be right. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. Like time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. And I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. This has been a James Rock Street production.